But first, as the Foreign Office and the family and friends of ISIS hostage, Alan Henning, await news, maybe it's time to reflect on David Cameron's support for Saudi Arabia. The Prime Minister has been only too keen to visit the dictatorship, but Saudi Arabia has beheaded more than 20 people since the 4th of August, according to Amnesty International. And Cameron, Miliband and Clegg have little to say about the 2,000 killed by the Saudi state since 1985 for non-crimes that include sorcery. The reason for Cameron's subservience to the bankrollers of Wahhabi militancy around the world is clear. Money. There are 200 joint ventures, including arms contracts, between UK and Saudi companies worth an estimated £11 billion. That's worth more to British elites than the heads of British hostages, let alone the lives of British soldiers who have fought Saudi-backed forces in Afghanistan and Iraq. But now, even while David Cameron expresses grief for the deaths of British hostages decapitated by the Saudi-backed militants of ISIS, he says nothing of the persecution of Christians in the oil-rich kingdom. In the past few days, there are reports of Saudi police storming Christian prayer meetings and the mass arrests of congregations of men, women and children. Mind you, here is the carnage in Malula in Syria, a town where the people still speak the language of Jesus, Aramaic. David Cameron and his government were allied to the rebels that shelled the churches and convents of Malula before taking nuns as hostages. The question is, will we have to wait for history books to be written before we learn of the atrocities that Britain is involved in, thanks to our intelligence agencies, the Foreign Office, and Number 10 itself?